Hey there guys, welcome to the Meat Shop. Thanks for clicking on. In this episode, we're gonna be working with wild game and making the hunter salami. It's a super popular sausage in our meat shop during hunting season. We usually do a large diameter version of it. Um, it's actually a play on German Jadgewurst. A little different though, because it's made of venison, which isn't traditional, I know, but it's really good. So, if you like it, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, let's make some Jadgewurst. Hunter salami. Hey there guys, so let's get started on the hunter salami. Like I said in the intro, it's called, it's kind of a play on Jadgewurst, or Jadga, however you guys say it, um, which is very, very similar to a summer sausage. Uh, I just find this one a little better, the spice combination's a little bit different, and uh, we're gonna give you that here today. But what we're starting with here is some ground up venison mixed with pork. Uh, I mixed this stuff, ground and mixed this stuff earlier today when I made the how to make your, how to grind venison and ratio pork video, which will be down below or in the playlist. This meat, this venison was supplied by Randy Pletz. He's from North 49 Outdoors. They have a really cool YouTube channel, bunch of hunting, shooting, sons of guns, they go all over the place. But here's uh, some beautiful looking meat. A little bit of fat in there, you can see. Uh, nice, beautiful lean venison is what it's made out of. We got 5.5 pounds of venison and 2.2 pounds of 50-50 pork trim, which comes off the belly or the loin. So it's really beautiful trim. It's really beautiful venison meat. It's gonna make a really yummy, what I call hunter salami, but it's the spices from Yadgawurst. Uh, yeah, so like I said, 3.5 kg, 7.7 7 pounds. 7.7 .7 pounds is the total batch. We're gonna mix the spices. We're gonna add a little bit of beer and we're gonna let this one sit for at least overnight uh, or even a couple days. I really find that the beer inside this maybe acts with the sugar and really changes the flavor over a day or two. What is the recipe you ask for Jadgawurst, AKA Hunter Salami, which is super popular in hunting season. It is in grams per kilogram, 15 grams of salt per kilogram of meat, 1.5 grams of cracked black pepper or you could use whole peppercorns or a very, very coarse pepper at 1.5 grams per kilogram. Dextrose, which is refined corn sugar, or if you don't have that, you can just go ahead and use regular sugar, regular white sugar, at three grams per kilogram. Mustard powder at three grams per kilogram. Mustard seed at three grams per kilogram. So it's got a little bit more mustard than your typical summer sausage. Coriander, which you'll find in your summer sausage at two grams per kilogram. Garlic, one gram per kilogram. Cure, three grams per kilogram. And that's cure number one. Sodium erythrobate, which you don't really necessarily need in this one since you let it sit overnight. But if you wanted to smoke it the same day, I would use cure accelerator, which is sodium erythrobate, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, those things. Um, and then optionally, if you were gonna make this out of beef and pork or just straight beef or just straight pork, you would probably want to use a binder, which is more protein. So that's soy protein, whey protein, milk powder, carrageenan protein, that type of stuff at 10 grams per kilogram. But since the protein content is so high on wild game, you can probably skip it all together and be A-OK -okay in this recipe. Then we're gonna use beer at 10 grams per kilogram and water at a hot 90 grams per kilogram. So that's gonna give us a total of 100 grams per kilogram of liquid, which is 10%, which is really nice because that's kind of about what cooks off during our smoking process, sometimes about 15%. I'm gonna stuff these into fibrous casings, 75 millimeter fibrous casings, which I had just started soaking right before we started the video. They're non-edible. We'll peel them off after we're done our smoking process. So, spread our venison meat here from the North 49 dudes out. Well, here's our spice mix. There we go, look at that, you can, kinda looks cool, eh? Cracked pepper, you got kinda two things that pop out of the cracked pepper and the mustard corns. Mustard seeds, mustard corns, no such thing. All right, I put it, I'll put it all on. You can make a slurry up if you want to. You can also, I finished this by the way, just remembered, on a three millimeter plate which is an eighth of an inch. First grind is a coarse grind, second grind is a fine grind, and then I mix my spices on. Some guys say, well, why don't you add the spices before your second grind? You can, it just gets a little sticky in your grinder. Now I will add the beer and water. I have the water pre-measured, but we'll have to add the beer 
What kind of beer do I like using? I tend to like using in this guy a Pilsner or Lager. And I usually have Hocktail Brewery Pilsner or Lager on hand, but I don't have any today. So I'm using the fanciest Brewhouse Pilsner from Saskatchewan. That's Saskatchewan, Canada. You've probably never heard of it. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Who named them? So I need 35 milliliters. Mix that around. Put about half of it on here until the meat and spices start to absorb it. Then I'll put the other half on. But oh man, this one smells so good. And it's, the flavor is so awesome, especially after it sits in the fridge for a day or two. Then you take it through that heavy, nice smoke. And by the way guys, this meat is all very cold. I popped this uh, in the freezer just before I started making it. And mixing it here after I ground it in the ground pork and venison video. So it's good and cold, right close to zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. Okay, been mixing away for, I don't know, three or four minutes. And uh, the foolproof test is, you grab a handful and it sticks to your hand, you've got your protein extraction. That means it's gonna fill that sausage casing, it's gonna be nice and sliceable, it's not gonna crumble on you, and that's exactly what you want. Now we're gonna take big handfuls of this, load it in the sausage stuffer, punch it in to work out all the air pockets, and then next shot will be it coming out of the sausage stuffer. All right, so like I said, the next shot would be us stuffing it out of the stuffing horn. I'm not sure if you caught my mistake, but I forgot to add the other half of the water and beer, so I pulled it out of the sausage stuffer after I put it in, mix that water and beer in, and then reloaded it. So, it's all in there. All right. Now with these guys, like I said, fibrous 75 millimeter casings. We just started soaking them right before we started. And you just load them up to the end of the horn, choke them real good and tight. You can get these guys nice and full. And uh, I kind of forgot to mention too, like uh, before I've had guys put kind uh, of aged cheddar or Monterey Jack or something like that in these sausages as well as summer sausages and it's really nice turns out really good so there's one and I've been squeezing pretty hard with my left hand there around the horn the whole time so we got a nice one full sausage and we'll load it up do it again drag her down right to the end squeeze nice and tight get her good and full and go there we go and as a little tip or trick which you guys have probably seen on other videos if you're subscribed to the channel, as I take this off before I'm done stuffing, grab a smaller horn, sleeve some plastic over it, and I push out the remaining sausage that's inside into the sausage casing. So you don't lose that pound or maybe not pound, but a couple ounces of meat anyways. Perfect. There we go. Gets most of it out into there. Then you have a little bit in the bottom which you can just hand feed into the casing. Get your mitts in there, scoop that guy out. Another little ball, or you can make meatballs out of it and whatnot, but we'll add it to the sausage today since it's going back to Randy. From North 49 Outdoors, where they shoot doll rams, bears, big white tails, big mule deers. There we go, I just work it in there, squeeze it down nice and tight, and if there's any air pockets, I'll just take the tip of a knife and poke them. Tip of the knife like so. Just let that little itty bitty hole. Then you have no air pockets in there. You'll have a nice smooth texture all the way around when it's done. Then I just take a piece of butcher's twine, spin it, get it real tight, and just give it a double knot. Because these casings kind of are moisture permeable. You don't got to worry about them blowing out the ends. Do the same with this guy. Push, push. Spin, put a double knot on. These guys are done now for a couple days in the cooler and uh, then we'll stick them in the smokehouse, give them a heavy hickory smoke and bring them up to a fully cooked temperature. All right, here's the Hunter Salami 24 hours later. Pop them in here. There's a couple more, gonna join them. All right guys, so the smoke steps for these are all gonna be roughly the same. Uh, the final step is the only thing that's gonna change because you're cooking to an internal temperature on the final step. Uh, so the first step is gonna be drying. I'm gonna open up the dampers. You could have hung them at room temperature for an hour before you started hitting with smoke. But first step is dry. I do that at 150. 
Next step is smoke. I bump it up to 155, 160, and I hit him with hickory for an hour and a half. And then the final step is an internal cook. So it's the cook step. I bring the humidity up and we cook them till they hit 160. That's fully cooked. That kills E. coli and stuff like that. And then we're gonna give them a nice bath, not the pepperonis, I like them a little bit drier, so we're gonna take them into the cooler, cool them down, but uh, we're gonna start smoking these guys, and next time we check on them, they'll be fully cooked. I guess since I have four different shapes and sizes in here though, guys, they're gonna come out at different stages. The pepperonis are gonna come out first, obviously, because they're smaller diameter, then the smokies, then the garlic ring, then the hunter's salami. So, stay tuned for that. All right, the hunter salamis are finished up. So they just went off, so we'll pull them out. Same drill as other sausages. Ooh, look at them. Pull them out, cool them down immediately. Give them a nice rinse. Now, in theory with these guys, you could cook them like you don't have to, you should take them up to 160, but since they're such a large diameter sausage, they're gonna continue to cook a bit even if we give them an ice water bath. So you could probably take them to you know 155 or 158 and still be fine. We took these guys all the way up to 160 and they will have no wrinkles on them when we're done. Into the ice bath they go. No ice bath, cold water rinse. Hit them with that cold water till they're submerged. You can leave these guys in a little while since they're so big. It'll take them a little bit to cool down. There we go, we can let them sit in cold water for a couple minutes, then yank them out and put them in the cooler. The moment you've all been waiting for, the taste test on the Hunter Salami. Perfect, a little bit of wrinkle, but that's okay, because venison's a little bit leaner. And uh, next thing's next, we will chop into this guy and enjoy a piece. Nip the ends off here. And when we package these, I usually cut them just into quarters. Gives you one pound chubs so that you got a little bit of sandwich meat for the week and stuff, but mmm, nice. Look at that. You guys want to see, don't you? There you go, guys. The inside cut of the Hunter Slami. Got a little bit of mustard seed. You got some peppercorns, little specks of the pork fat throughout there, which means it's kind of a nice juicy. You know, we got a nice firm texture. So it's very sliceable, which means we got a good protein extraction, but it's not dried out or anything. I got a little air pocket right there. When the other side of it's right there, but that's okay. It's own production. Let's slice into it. Of course, these are fibrous casings, so you can't eat them. So I just make a little nick down there, get the corner started. And if you peel down and away, lots of guys say, oh, I lost a bunch of meat on the casing. But if you peel down and away, you can see you can see that you don't lose hardly any. Uh, admittedly, it's a little bit harder with lean meat like venison, but if you pull down at a big angle away, you basically lose none. Quite a bit easier with pork and what have you, but there you go, look at that. Ooh, ah, ooh. Now time to dive into a slice. This is my personal favorite way to use venison meat. This is one of my favorite recipes. Uh, you guys let me know what your favorite recipe for venison is, and maybe we'll make some throughout hunting season. I'm making these in August, but hunting season's right around the corner. So we can maybe share and make some more recipes with you, but look at that. Nice, beautiful slice. Hum. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. My favorite. It's hard to describe. It's got such a unique flavor that Pilsner or Lager really changes the flavor. And uh, the little mustard seeds kind of pop when you hit them and find them. And you get a little bit of heat from the peppercorns that are in there. The addition of pork keeps it moist and really milds out the game flavor without, without taking it away. You know, like it still, uh, still tastes like venison, but it's much more mild, really enjoyable. This one's great on sandwiches, great on cheese and cracker platters. Very good. I highly recommend this one. Let me know what your guys' favorite recipes are down in the link below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And we got a couple more venison videos out. So be sure to watch those guys. And uh, thanks again for watching. Mm.